Imagine you had to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It wouldn't take long before you became exhausted, started to make mistakes, and eventually couldn't do your job properly. And that's basically what happens to your immune system when you're infected with HIV. Because the virus is never eliminated from your body, your immune system is constantly trying to fight it. And eventually, your immune cells respond exactly the way you would if you were always working. They become exhausted. They can't do their job properly, they can't make all the important things that they normally do, and they lose the ability to respond to infection. Now, my thesis focuses on a really small subset of immune cells called NKT cells. And they have characteristics of more than one cell type, so they're sort of like the spork of the immune system. And that combination allows them to play a really unique role. There aren't very many of them, but they can do a huge number of jobs. And that lets them direct how other immune cells perform their jobs. So a healthy NKT cell, like the one shown on the left side of the slide, can be really important in determining how your body responds to an infection. But during HIV infection, NKT cells become really exhausted. And up until now, we haven't had a good idea of why that happens or whether there's anything that we can do about it. So that brings us to the second part of what I study, which is a factor that can be put on the surface of a cell that basically tells it to go to sleep or to shut down. And that factor is called lag, and having it on a cell is sort of like trying to do your job with a huge concrete block tied around your waist. Now in healthy people, it's really important to be able to tell your immune system when to shut down, because you don't want it to cause extra damage to your body after an infection is over. But during a chronic infection like HIV, where the virus never goes away, it can cause problems when too many cells start to express these exhaustion factors. So I've measured the amount of lag on the surface of NKT cells from healthy people and from people living with HIV. And I found that there's way more lag on the surface of cells from people who are HIV positive. But more importantly, if we take those cells and we try to activate them, the cells that have lots of lag on their surface don't work nearly as well as the ones that don't have any lag. And that's shown on the right-hand side of the slide, an NKT cell with lots of lag on its surface that's acting like it's fallen asleep from exhaustion. Now, the big question that comes out of this research is whether we could block lag and reverse this exhaustion or get rid of that concrete block tied to you. Ultimately, if we can make these cells more functional, they'll be better able to fight HIV or any other illnesses that a person is exposed to. And this is really important because although we have some great drugs to fight HIV, even when those drugs work the way they're supposed to, your immune system never quite goes back to normal. So I hope that if we can combine our existing treatments with a drug that will block exhaustion, we could do a much better job at keeping people healthy. Thank you very much.